Welcome everybody to the latest World Atlantic Ador video blog on the sinking of HMS Wasp. An intriguing story. Was it a curse or human error? Hopefully our tale will enlighten you. Ireland in 1884 was a nation in turmoil. The scars of the Great Famine were still raw. Two years previously, the two most senior politicians in Ireland had been assassinated by the Invincibles in the Phoenix Park. And the land war still raged all across the island. The land war was organised by the Land League, spearheaded by the great Irish patriot Michael Davitt. The Land League had three simple but profoundly important demands which became known as the three Fs, fair rent, free sale and fixity of tenure. The landlords were mostly Anglo-Irish and many of those were absentees, living in England or Scotland in great style, while their tenants suffered in poverty, trying to scratch out a living in areas suffering from great neglect, as the absentee landlords refused to invest in their properties, that many of them would seldom see or visit. It was no wonder that Ireland was suffering a period of extreme social unrest. It was in this atmosphere that HMS Wasp began her final journey from her home port of Westport County Mayo to facilitate the eviction of three tenant families on the island of Innistrow, which is the most northerly of the Irish islands, lying six miles from Malin Head off the coast of County Donegal. Commissioned on the 1st of December 1881, HMS Wasp was a banterer class gunboat built for colonial service throughout the British Empire to enforce what became known as gunboat diplomacy. She was 125 feet long and displaced 465 tonnes. A 360 horsepower steam engine made the Wasp a workhorse rather than a racehorse, and the engine was supplemented by a rigging system carried on three masts to supplement the engine or to replace it when the ship had to conserve coal on long voyages. She began her active service stationed in what was then called Queenstown, which we now know as Cove, County Cork. Little is known of the Wasp's earlier duties, but they are likely to have been fishery inspection and lighthouse provision throughout the Irish coastal waters. The crew complement of the Wasp was 60 officers and men. In 1884, as the agitation of the land war grew, she was moved to Westport to help quell civil disobedience and as a symbol of imperial power in a region which was a hotbed of civil unrest. The Wasp, commanded by 39-year-old Lieutenant J.D. Nichols, was ordered to report to Moville in County Donegal to pick up bailiffs and police whom an absentee landlord had ordered to evict three tenant families, who had refused to, or more likely, were unable to pay their rent on Innistrul. Evictions at the time saw large deployments of armed police, and in some cases the military, to protect the bailiffs who carried out these inhuman evictions. A particularly nasty element of the eviction process was the destruction of the family's house by battering ram, so they could not return. There are many poignant photographs that show the horror and the brutality of these land war era evictions. So on the 21st of September 1884, HMS Wasp left Westport to facilitate yet another eviction of poor farming families from their homes. Ironically, this was not the Wasp's first visit to the island. The year previously, they had delivered a cargo of seed potatoes to the islanders donated by the Quakers, the Society of Friends. HMS Wasp did not appear to be in a hurry, as she was under sail and her steam engine was turned off. In the early hours of the 22nd of September, she was sailing nine miles off the coast of northwest Donegal and the island of Tory. Most of the crew, including the captain and his officers, were sleeping in their bunks. Naval historians have always questioned why the Wasp was sailing inside Tory rather than to her west, which would have given the ship greater sea room. Also, being under sail meant she did not have the manoeuvrability that her steam engine would have provided. The weather that early morning was noted as being cloudy with occasional squalls and rain showers. It was not classed as stormy or indeed hazardous. The sailor navigating the Wasp was unfamiliar with the terrain around Tory, and at 3.55am the ship struck a reef directly under the Tory lighthouse. The initial collision broke the hull of the Wasp in two, and she began to take on water at an alarming rate. Awoken from his slumber, the ship's commander, Lieutenant Nichols, ordered the crew to take to the lifeboats. However, disaster struck, and the Wasp hit the reefs again. There was no hope for HMS Wasp, as the impact shattered what was left of the ship, 
and within fifteen minutes the wasp was under water, with only her masthead protruding from the Atlantic waves. Six poor souls clung to the rigging until they were somehow washed ashore and sheltered by the Tory Islanders. Fifty-two of their shipmates, including Lieutenant Nichols, sadly perished. The survivor stayed on Tory for four days until a Navy frigate, HMS Valiant, took them to the Rathmullen, where they then moved on to Derry, where they were treated as celebrities by a large crowd, even meeting the Derry mayor at the time, Mr McVicar. After a short stay in Dublin, the six survivors were summoned to Portsmouth for a court-martial. At the subsequent court-martial, a Royal Navy Court of Inquiry found that HMS Wasp had been lost in consequence of the want and due care and attention, which basically means they weren't looking where they were going. All of the survivors were exonerated. No one, not even the sleeping Nichols and his officers, were given the blame for the sinking, and the court-martial verdict was consigned to history. However, historians have speculated that the cause of the sinking could be related to the Tory lighthouse. Some have suggested that the lighthouse was extinguished as the islanders feared that after the farmers of Innistrul had been evicted, they would be next. What is known is that the lighthouse was on after the collision, but could it have been switched off before the wasp struck the reef? The fact is, the lighthouse was never mentioned by the court-martial, and human error more than a malicious act, was more likely to blame for the sinking. One local legend is that HMS Wasp was sunk through the use of the Tory Island Cursing Stone by islanders fearful of a future eviction themselves. Tory did indeed have such a stone at the time, called Clock the Malacht or Clock Horry. Folklore links the stone to St Column Kiln and the pilgrimage route around the island and Turris Moor. Pilgrims would visit the numerous holy sites in Tory and then at the end of their walk, they would defiantly turn the cursing stone upside down. However, a curse could be invoked if the pilgrimage route was done in a counterclockwise direction. Folklore notes that such a curse helped defeat an invading English raiding party. No matter if you believe in curses or not, one fact we do know is that the cursing stone disappeared shortly after the sinking of the wasp. The local priest, Father Michael O'Donnell, had it removed and to this present day, no one knows, or perhaps is willing to tell, where it is. After the sinking, over the next few weeks, bodies of the deceased came ashore across the Donegal coastline, and many are buried in local graveyards from Gidor to Malham Head. A monument was later erected in the churchyard of St Anne's Church of Ireland in Killalt, where several crew members are buried. This is a most poignant memorial, as it looks out to Tory and the site of the sinking of HMS Wasp which never got to help evict poor Irish farmers from their homes on Innistrul. I hope you've enjoyed the story of HMS Wasp, and please check back on our Facebook page and our website for more stories about the history, folklore and beauty of Gidor. Thank you.